Henry had worked on the island for many years. He is a mixed traffic engine like James, meaning he is capable of hauling freight and passengers. When Henry arrived on the island of Sodor many years ago, he was a failure, as his designer in the mainland had stolen plans from Gordon's designer, Sir Nigel Gresley, and was given a cross between a Class A1 and a Great Northern Railway C1 Atlantic with a small firebox. But thankfully, after solving the problem with his steaming issues, he was given Welsh coal, and later on, he was given a new shape at crew by the Fat Director's good friend, William Stanya from the LMS region. But over the years, he always thought what will happen to him if the Fat Controller's great-great-grandfather decided to scrap him. What's wrong, Henry? asked Thomas. Oh! Uh, nothing, Henry stammered. Are you sure? Thomas asked. Yes, snapped Henry. Okay, okay, don't have to be snappy. But Henry feels bad. The thought that struck Henry's funnel had got him angry. But Henry was tired and longing for a rest. Maybe I'll apologize to him tomorrow. And he backed himself into the sheds. The fat director, also Topham Hat One, was at the sheds talking to Henry. He did not look too well. Henry, you're getting expensive. We've given all the parts and fresh coal you need, but they've done you no good. But sir, the coal is no good for Henry due to his smaller firebox, as it can't make his heat. With Welsh coal, he could do much better, but the fat director had no choice. I'm sorry, but with our finances in trouble, it cannot be done. This made Henry and his crew very sad. But the fat director had other news for him though. I will give you another fair chance. A group of people from the LMS are coming here for a meeting of using Badawin Furnace. I believe it's going to be a long meeting. So Henry left for Baron Furnace with a full amount of steam. But on his way back, however, he was feeling sluggish. Henry was puffing slower. And slower. And slower by the time they got up to Gordon's Hill. Henry's steam has dropped and he has to stop. His crew tried very hard to fire him up again, but to no avail. Oh, I'm very sorry, Henry, his driver said, and he went his way to Wellsworth. At last, Thomas arrived. Thomas pulled him all the way back to the big station. But as they got out, the passengers from the LMS weren't very happy, and neither was the fat director. I will talk to you later, he scolded. Thomas shunted Henry in the out of view siding. Days had gone by, and they had turned into weeks, and the weeks turned into months. The fat director bought the Atlantic C1 he's been dreaming of. But one midnight, Henry was sleeping. The station was quiet, and the only sound was the sea swifting away with the splashes of waves in the distance. Just then, the Atlantic C1 pulled in with a fully loaded goods train. The fat director came towards him. It's been a few months, Henry, and I'm sorry to say this, but you're going back to the other railway. 
and you will be scrapped since we can't fix you and neither would your old railway. Henry was shot and upset. He had nothing else to say. But the Atlantic C1 went its way to the other railway. She was sad about the news as well. Henry was pleading like mad. No, no, not the scrap heap. Anything but the scrap heap. Please, don't send me back. I don't want to be scrapped. Please, no! Henry whistled loud and long that it made the other engines awake. Thomas spoke to him. What's wrong, Henry? <sighs> I had a nightmare, Henry panted. About what? grumbled Gordon. Back when I was in my old shape, the fact director, Sir Topham Hatton One, was going to scrap me. Thomas smiled. It's all over now, Henry. You're still with us. And besides, no matter how many times you failed in your old shape, Sir Topham Hat One never gave up on you. That made Henry better. Thanks, Thomas. And I'm sorry for snapping at you earlier. That's all right, said Thomas. Henry is still proud to be working all his life on the North Western Railway. Whenever he breaks down, the bad controller and his workmen fix him. And no matter how old he gets, Sir Charles Topham Hatt will make sure he is not a pile of scrap.